So the media likes telling stories. And I mean stories in a very neutral way, the same way that Edward Bernays would talk about propaganda. Not as a good thing or as a bad thing, but inevitability. It comes with the trait. And what is a story then? A story is a series of build-ups and payoffs, and these exist even outside of the realm of fictitiousness. Like if you told your friend a story about something weird that happened to you last night, Everyone knows that the payoff is that weird thing that happened last night. But as you're telling the story, everything is building up and facilitating that payoff of that weird thing that happened. Similarly, you see when these school shooting events happen, it's usually about the shooter. The shooter is like the most important character. He's the face that we see all the time. And outside of 07 and 99, where a lot of these things happened, we're at a point now with 2012 and all of the shootings that have happened then, that there's this white school shooter narrative, which is the main point talked about in all of these shootings. There's this narrative that school Shooters are these white, angry guys who kill a bunch of kids, and then the media tries to retell their story in a sympathetic way that would never happen to any black criminal or Hispanic criminal. In this case, with the Parkland shooting and Nicholas Cruz, it seemed like it was headed that same direction, but after a while, the storytelling change. Now, the secondary narrative point has become what used to be the first narrative point, which is the gun control thing. It's the easy talking point to go ahead and speak about, and it's the one that anyone can feel safe talking about, as opposed to the racial narrative, which, as I've said four years ago, trumps all. And the main facets of this, the new main characters of this narrative, aren't, is it the shooter, it's not the victims who've died, it's the survivors. In this case, Emma, the shaved head Cuban lady, and David Hogg, the V-shaped face dude. And they're main characters of this, they're... The ones we see on viral videos all the time. The ones that we see in news reports, they've become bigger memes than 56% shooter Nicholas Cruz. Like, I don't see his face anymore. And that's kind of interesting. Because now it's come to a point where a lot of people are making bigger crisis after conspiracies than ever about these guys and the type of activism that they are going for, which is really aggressive. Like, they are cursing out politicians like Donald Trump and saying that if and when they see these politicians coming over to Parkland to talk about these things, they'll say these same curse words to their face. In order to get an actual discussion on gun control. And stuff like that is kind of disillusioning people. Like, even if they're not crisis actors necessarily, this whole thing is a circus. It is a media circus for a story that has a lot of buildup, but no satisfying payoff. No gun control laws have ever been passed as of right now. Instead, they're considering ideas like having students show up to school with clear backpacks, which someone like David Hogg and Emma complained is a First Amendment right violation, all while they were ripping up the Bill of Rights. Well, Emma built, ripped off a Bill of Rights replica in reference to the Second Amendment. 
And it's pretty funny that they're talking about how infringing this is when, you know, us hood dudes, us dudes who had to go to school with blacks, Arabs, other Hispanics, other Dominicans like me, we had to go to school with the metal detectors. We had to get the TSA, like, laser frisking and whatnot. Thankfully, no one was putting fingers in my booty hole, but no. Maybe in the future, that's something that people like me gotta deal with. But, they were tight. And the big problem with this is that I know why they became the big main characters. It's because the worst thing you can do when telling a story is repetitiousness. And in this post-CNN era of the 24-hour looping news cycle, repetitiousness is something that we have to deal with more than ever. Especially when Facebook is essentially repost land. Everyone is reposting everything. So we're getting the same old insight from black man number 500 or Puerto Rican man number 600. Where it's like... The shooter wasn't an Arab Muslim terrorist, he wasn't a black bug, he wasn't a Hispanic drug dealer, he was a white man. Which he wasn't, he was like this 56% Jew Amerimut. But, you know, that doesn't really matter. What does matter is that... In doing it this way, and making this change, you got people like me who we're kind of bored with this kind of topic. Like, I said everything I needed to say when I spoke about, you know, Sandy Hook. You know, this little heartfelt series of videos I made about that. But this video comes over, not this video, this event comes over, and midway through, they changed their script. And they changed the main character. And everything is sort of on the nose. Everyone is being unnatural. Like, there's no passive aggression. There's just aggression. Just cursing out lazy-ass dads of the world. By David Hogg's own words. And... It's not believable. I can't get the impression that these guys survived a school shooting. They seem way too confident, way too aggressive, way too vindictive. And part of me doesn't really doubt that they're... Cr part of me doesn't really feel like they're crisis actors anymore. I know I felt that in the beginning, but now it's like, yeah, they look like a rejected cast of a Nickelodeon live-action sitcom, but... It seems more believable to me. I've sort of started gaslighting myself to the possibility that these are actual high school students. But even in spite of all of that, the fact that I have this doubt, and a lot of people are having this doubt who generally don't believe in crisis actors, it's because of this unnatural, on-the-nose behavior and this new form of storytelling which is making this whole media situation especially with the lack of payoff that we've gotten of gun control into a an event of theater a clown show and even if gun control laws did pass which as you would know I wouldn't find to be a good thing I'd find that to be a bad thing by bypassing the Bill of Rights, it sets a prefer precedence for an easy come, easy go level of activism. If it passes like this, it can easily be taken away. These laws are no longer held by an ironclad linchpin. They are powerless over us. And that only contributes more to the shit show that we've experienced this month and a half. 
which it's made for some good memes. And that's always a silver lining that anybody can take nowadays. The media is still as dumb as shit as it's always been. And normies are still as dumb as they've always been, but we're getting good meme material. And it's always nice to look at things through an ironic lens. So this has been your boy, Mr. Marcus 7 Suck my jacket.